County brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, if y'all viewed my previous uh, speaking, uh, I was upset. How was Jesus flipping over tables upset? I was upset where, as Paul was with the Corinthians, when he threatened them, y'all straighten this stuff out before I get down there, and I do straighten it out. I was that upset. I sure was. So, like you know, I've been going to throw some comments and, and been making speaking songs. And, and there's a comment made. Uh, I ain't even going to waste on going to find it, but I'll tell you what it dealt with. Uh, people were uh, talking about this thing called hyper dispensationalism. Now, I don't know what that is, and I don't care what it is. Yeah. But today speaking, the rejection of God using man as an excuse. That's going to be, the, the, I guess, the title of it. It's got a title. There are those among us that are rejecting God through their rejection of his word. Today we'll look upon God's word and only God's word on this, the dispensation of God. Now, 1 Corinthians 9.17 says this, a dispensation is committed to me. Paul spoke in words. Ephesians 1.10 speaks this. The dispensation of the fullness of times. Ephesians 3.2 speaks of this. The dispensation of the grace of God. And Colossians 1.25 speaks this. The dispensation of God given to me, that's Paul, for you, that's me and you, uh, to fulfill the word of God. To fulfill the word of God. Now, the fullness of times, I would say that we all agree that that speaks of the, the fullness of the Gentiles. Okay, we're not going to get into that. We're speak, speak, speaking on this thing called dispensation. The rejection of God's word using man as an excuse. You can't even talk to people about dispensation because they man has made them so fearful of the word. They're fearing man instead of God. Now, it's in God's word. There is such thing as dispensation of God. Uh, it's called a, a dispensation that was given to Paul for you and me to fulfill the word of God. The dispensation of the grace of God and to the fullness of time. So first, we as saints accept that there is a doctrine given unto us within our gospel of God's dispensation. We either accept that in faith or we become stiff necked and rebellious. It's that plain and simple. You might not understand it, but you need to accept in faith that there is a dispensation of God. No matter what man tells you or you hear from others. Secondly, we admit that we are unlearned, i.e. ignorant, of this doctrine in meekness and humility or we indeed understand this truth and we attempt to teach those that are learned i.e. ignorant thirdly you will be exercising your discernment that's how you exercise your discernment it says you exercise your discernment so you'll know good from evil uh, in you okay you will recognize uh, exercising your discernment and you will start to recognize those among us that one, desire to move unto perfection, or two, that those that reject God openly. I'll read that again. You will be exercising discernment, and you will be able to come to recognize those among us that desire to move unto perfection, or those that reject God openly. If they have ears to hear, then praise God for finding them. They're a rarity today. If they are dull of hearing, then have nothing to do with those wicked people. For we are charged of God. 1 Corinthians 14.38 But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Now, in this charge from God, there's a twofold purpose behind God speaking these words. Let, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. There's a twofold purpose. The twofold purpose is this. 
am I, are you, when you come upon these people, would, are you faithful to God's word? Are you unfaithful to God's word? Are you faithful to God in obedience? Are you unfaithful to God in obedience? I pray you be found faithful today. Timothy's charged, which means we as well are charged. In 1 Timothy 4.16, Take heed to yourself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you shall both save yourself and them that hear you. Brothers and sisters, look. It's common knowledge that man has messed up the Word of God tremendously. Common knowledge. But that does not mean we reject God's Word because man has screwed it up. No. In this issue of dispensation until the fullness of times, we know right there that God in His Wisdom has given us the explanation of a dispensation. A dispensation is a time period. You can't argue with that. You may want to, but you can't. The dispensation of the fullness of time. There alone we know that it is an a era, a time period. Okay, what is that dispensation as well? It's of the grace of God. We know that one day, like, oh, God shut that ark up, that ark door on the folks outside. One day, grace is going to end. So what, this, this era of dispensation, this era of God's grace, this time of God's grace is going to come to an end. We know that the dispensation was committed to Paul for the Gentiles, for the uncircumcised. That's where the fullness of times of the Gentiles comes in. And we know this as well, that the dispensation of God that was given to Paul was for a purpose, to fulfill the word of God. So you can say you don't believe in dispensation, uh, and, and I, I, I got to question your heart. You can say you don't understand dispensation. Hey, we can go, we can work with that. God wants you to understand it. It's real simple. Man's the one that brought into confusion. Remember, God is not of confusion, but of peace within the church of God. He wants peace. He wants you to understand, and he'll give it to you. But first, we have to admit. Remember, I said we have to admit something. Okay, I, I just I don't I don't understand it. And then God, and if you really want to understand it, because this is part of us moving unto perfection. If you really want to understand it, God will grace you with that, or He'll place somebody in your path that will that will walk you down that road to understand it. But remember. There are many among us that are rejecting God and are using man as an excuse. Don't be found as those such people. Don't be found unfaithful. I'd rather be found, I'd rather just admit I'm ignorant as dog. I'm just ignorant on this subject. I admit to God I'm ignorant on it. Admit to one of your spiritual elders you're ignorant on it. That's how, that's humility. That's in meekness. You, it, it takes it takes a, 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 a it takes a powerful man, and that's through God's grace. But it takes a powerful man to un, to admit they ignorant on something that they're unlearned, and that they want to understand. So. I'm always praying for you. You know that. Y'all are on my hearts daily. I mean, y'all can tell. I, 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 I love to speak about God's Word to the brothers and the sisters. I want us all to move under that perfection that we're supposed to. I want us to all grow up and become mature in the Word of God, in knowledge and understanding. Because you might have knowledge, but if you don't have understanding, 
I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you will become deceived. There's going to come a time where God says that there's going to be some mighty things done by the, by the anti, by the devil. Let's just say the, the devil. I don't want to get to the Antichrist today. By the wicked one. Mighty signs and wonders, miraculous works and stuff. And there's going to be, they're going to be so powerful that they could deceive the very elect. The elect, I'm telling you, many of the elect will be deceived, but the very elect, they're the ones with knowledge and understanding. They're going to be so powerful that it, it, they could, it could just almost deceive them. But a full-grown man don't be deceived. It's them silly women. And yes, man, some of you men out there that are sealed with the promise are as silly women. But you ain't deceived. So, hey, I'll see y'all next time around. Y'all have a good one.